Welcome to HDTV, you're now rocking with your boy. Alright, now, a look at head coach situations of five teams as 2022 NFL season near its end. One week from the end of the 2023 regular season, here's a thumbnail look at where things stand with the three, well, 2022 to 2023 regular season. Here's a thumbnail look at where things stand with the three current head coaching searches, as well as a couple of potential openings elsewhere. According to sources close to the situation, Denver Broncos firing head coach Nathaniel Hackett. Hold on. Firing head coach Nathaniel Hackett before the end of his first season showed Denver's new ownership isn't afraid to make bold moves. So don't be surprised if the Broncos swing big in the coaching search with former Saints head coach Sean Payton, University of Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh, and Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn expected to be among the top targets. Now, Payton's situation is complicated because he remains under contract with the saints who would need to grant permission <coughs> excuse me for the broncos or any other team to speak with payton who's 59 years old and work out a trade compensation would denver have the draft picks to pull it off after the russell wilson trade last march and does payton believe he could work with wilson who is coming off the worst year of his career at age 34 and has a contract that's fully guaranteed for another two seasons. Payton will be selective and won't come cheap. Harbaugh, who's 59 years of age, said after interviewing with the Vikings last year that he wouldn't consider returning to the NFL again. However, the Broncos are one of multiple teams that have been doing homework on Harbaugh, who was 44-19-1 as the Niners head coach from 2011-14, leading San Francisco to the NFC Championship game three times and an appearance in Super Bowl XLVII. Condoleezza Rice, a member of the Broncos' ownership group and search committee, has deep ties to Stanford University, where Harbaugh coached before his NFL stint. Harbaugh's full focus has been on the Wolverines' championship push. Now that it's, now that it's over after Michigan's lost his TCU, his interest in the NFL, if any, should become apparent quickly. Quinn, who's 52 years of age, was a candidate for the Broncos job last year that went to Hackett, who was fired on December 26 with a 4-11 record in his first season. He's close with Broncos GM George Patton and like Patton and I mean and like Payton and Harbaugh, Quinn has prior experience and success as a head coach, having led the Falcons to an appearance in Super Bowl XLV III during his five plus season in Atlanta. The cultural turnaround on defense that Quinn has led in Dallas is impressive, and owner Jerry Jones surely would do whatever he can to keep Quinn as he did a year ago. Now, the Broncos also are doing background work on many young coaches and have said they want to interview their defensive co coordinator, Ejiro Evero, who figures to be a candidate elsewhere as well. Broncos owner and CEO Greg Penner is new to the NFL. <sighs> Excuse me, but he's a highly respected business mind and impressed in the press conference announcing Hackett's dismissal. He'll run the search with assistant from Patton and the new coach will report directly to Penner. Carolina Panthers interim coach Steve Wilkes has a team in the position to win the NFC South if they could complete a sweep of the Bucks today. A remarkable feat considering Carolina opened the season with the head coach who's now a Cornhusker a quarterback who's now a Ram, and a star running back who's now a 49er. After a 1-4 one, one start under ex-head coach Matt Arhul, they're 5-5 five and five under Wilkes. The turnaround has positioned Wilkes, who's 53 years of age, as a strong candidate for the full-time job. He's well-regarded and liked within the building. However, Carolina still intends to go through a full search process that also includes others in demand candidates. Owner David Tepper's top priorities have been solidifying the quarterback position and the offense. So expect the Panthers to interview all of the rising offensive gurus. 
If Wilkes is going to get the job, he'll need to sell his plan for that side of the ball too. Tepper also respects Wilkes' leadership traits, which is a huge part of the job. Now, the Indianapolis Colts, owner Jim Irsay grabbed the wheel in November with the benching of Matt Ryan, firing of Frank Reich, and stunning hire of Jeff Saturday as interim head coach against the advice of his top executives. It's hard to predict what Irsay might do next. What we do know is, Irsay remains a big fan of Saturday, who's 47 years of age, who has lost five in a row since the coach won his debut. Saturday absolutely will be a candidate for the full-time job, and if he could put together the right staff, especially on offense, he shouldn't be counted out. Irsay also has an affinity for Harbaugh, who's a member of the team's ring of honor as a player, though it's unclear whether that match would make sense for either side. The Colts have a traditional structure with the head coach reporting to the GM and the GM to the owner. That doesn't figure to change, which won't appeal to coaching candidates who want more control. Indianapolis has a respected GM in Chris Ballard, who is expected to be involved in the search process. The final call is Air Says, though, and he's a wild card. Now, the Houston Texans. The Texans plan to evaluate the future of head coach Lovey Smith at the end of the season. With the entire body of work being considered, the team has played well of late, including a win last week over the Titans and close losses to the Chiefs and Cowboys. But the Texans still have the worst record in the league, 2-12-1. All of that will factor into where things go for 2023. Staff changes are possible if Smith, 64, gets a second season. Arizona Cardinals, while speculations intensifies that head coach Cliff Kingsbury could be out after a disappointing fourth season, owner Michael Bidwell has not informed Kingsbury of any decision. Arizona just signed Kingsbury, who's 43 years old, to a contract extension last March through the 2027 season, meaning they would owe him a lot of money if they move on. Could the Cardinals wait and see if they can secure an upgrade before moving on? Kyler Murray's uncertain status for the start of the 2023 season coming off ACL reconstruction and general manager Steve Kimes' indefinite leave of absence for health reasons further complicate Arizona's future plans. Now, what should have been on here was the Raiders coach. He should have been fired, but they're keeping him for one more year. So, um, now... Here's the thing. When you're looking for a coach, you want to look for a coach who can keep balance, who knows how to run the offensive side of the ball as well as run the um, defensive side of the ball. Now, when it comes to um, these owners, they mainly hire majority candidates are who are Caucasian. Because the owners are Caucasian. They don't feel comfortable speaking to a real black man. And it's the facts. Now. For the Denver Broncos. Sean Payton would be a great pick. For the Denver Broncos. And I can see, but they're going to have to give up a lot to get Sean Payton. Sean Payton's not going to be cheap. So, do they have enough capital to get him? I don't think so. Because you're going to have to trade some first picks, second picks, whatever picks you have. You're going to have to trade it. Now, could I see him and Russell Wilson working together? Absolutely. They would be a great pair. So, I would love to see that, but Denver don't have the capital. So, if I was them, I'd see if I could go after Jim Harbaugh. I believe Harbaugh would be a cheaper pick, but the only thing is you would have to have, he would have to have control. I believe he's going to ask for control right now. 
you know. But Brian Flores would fit that job well too. But he's not going to get another chance ever again. So we'll see what happens. But Sean Payton would be a great arm choice for that job. I just don't know if Denver still has the capital to go get him. You know? Now, Dan Quinn. Would he be good? Dan Quinn, I believe, could do something there, too. I would go after him as well if I can. To me, Quinn got his team to the Super Bowl, albeit they choked it. So, you know, it is what it is. But he would turn that defense around. That defense would be vicious. They got the, the, the talent. You got Patrick Sertan, the second. You know. Hold on. Let me see something real quick. My bad, guys. I'm eating seafood gumbo. Getting my gumbo on. Let's see. All right, now. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay. So if we look at their um defense. Hold on. Shut up. All right, now. We look at their defense, you know, they have Purcell, Randy Gregory, they still have him. You know, they run a 34 defense. Pat Sertan. Justin Simmons is pretty good at the free. So they got some pieces. They'll, they'll have to add some pieces in the offseason, but I think Dan Quinn would be a good fit for the job. You know, I think he'll do well. You know, but if I could get Sean Payton, that's cool. I think Harbaugh would be a great choice, too. Because Harbaugh knows how to coach. Um... He knows how to coach an established quarterback. He did it with Alex Smith. And then, you know, he helped develop on um, Kaepernick, or I like to call Kaepernick. So, be on the lookout for that. But Harbaugh, who, who works with Russell the best, I think it'll be Payton. But I just think it's non-realistic. They don't have the capital to get Sean Payton. So I would go with Jim Harbaugh over Dan Quinn. And it's because Jim Harbaugh is very good, like um, Detroit T says. He's very good at putting a coaching staff around him to cover up for his deficiencies. So he would be great coaching um, Russell Wilson. I think he'll get Russell Wilson back on track. He'll challenge Russell, and, you know, he works well with his quarterbacks, you know. Now, the Carolina Panthers, should they stick with Wilkes? I don't know. You know, the players love him. People love him. I mean, if the players love him and they respect him, 
Give Wilkes a chance. Let him have a full season. Give him two seasons. You know, because it's hard to find another coach who can gravitate towards the players. Plus, if they beat the Bucks today, that'll really boost his um thing up. So really, I'm caught with a rock and a hard place. On one hand, I want to see the brother man survive and win. On the other hand, I want the brother man in Tampa to win so he can have another shot to our bowls. But, you know... I just felt like Ty Bowles has been sabotaged the whole year. I believe Bruce Arians is still coaching that Bucks team, allegedly. And he's done everything in his power to hurt them more than help. And they didn't really do anything with that roster. So. Now. Now, if they don't bring Wilkes back, I believe the Panthers do have the capital to go get um Sean Payton. But my thing is would um the Saints even trade Payton within the division? I don't think so. Now if they don't keep Wilkes, you could go to Payton, try to trade for him, because they got the capital out of all the teams. Them, the Texans, they have the capital to go get um Sean Payton. But Sean Payton ain't going to no damn Texans. He wanted to establish quarterback. And I don't see him going to Carolina because he said he wanted to establish quarterback. You know? So I could see them staying with Steve Wilkes. If not him, I would I would try to go after Brian Flores. I think he would help that defense get even stronger, but hey. Like I said, either them two, do I see Jim Harbaugh going? No, they don't have a quarterback. And Jim Harbaugh may come there and tell you, yo, I can help this team. I can run this team. Jim Harbaugh's problem has been picking quarterbacks in college. So what make you think he could pick quarterbacks in the NFL? So... I see that out of it. And Dan Quinn, could I see Dan Quinn going there? Yeah. Because Dan Quinn, to me, is the more familiar with the division like um, Sean Payton. So Dan Quinn is a coach who could just come there, turn it around. He got the pieces on defense. That team could be vicious. They get them a quarterback. Yo, they good to go. I'm just saying. Now, the Indianapolis Colts, if they keep Jeff Saturday, they've got to put a real coaching staff around him who understands situational football. And you may need an assistant coach to actually do the coaching duties to help speed him um, to basically um, you're going to need Saturday to shadow him. So he can actually know how to coach in certain situations. Because Saturday sucked in certain situations. And the Colts, they have got to draft them a quarterback. Just draft you a quarterback. <laughs> just draft the quarterback. Because you, you guys just ain't going to find one. You fired Frank Reich. In my opinion, it was mainly from last year. Picking Wentz. You guys brought in Matt Ryan, who was done for about five years now. Dan Quinn could have told you that Matt Ryan was done because, shit, he lost his job dealing with Matt Ryan. So y'all was tripping. Now, if they had a quarterback, this would be a great fit for um, Sean Payton. But they don't. Now, this may sound crazy, but let's say Sean Payton said, yo, I want to go to Indianapolis. Let me bring Tom Brady with me. For one year, 
I would do that. I'll get rid of Saturday, bring in Peyton for one year, and you can salvage that defense, get you some spare parts on running the ball, go from there. You know, go for a run. Now, Jim Harbaugh, I agree with the article. Jim Harbaugh used to be there. Do I think you'll have a problem with a GM? Um, no. If the GM, if the GM does what he asks, I don't think Jim Harbaugh have a problem with him. But I think Harbaugh would be straight, but they really don't have a quarterback. And Harbaugh, if he was a GM, he would suck because he don't know how to pick quarterbacks. So that's what I'm saying. I would try to, um, you know, I would go after Sean Payton. Now, Dan Quinn, would that work? Yeah, Dan Quinn, Dan Quinn would fit this team. Because they do have a defense. They have some linebackers. They have a little pass rush. You got Buckner at the defensive tackle. He's one of the best in the league. So, hey, Dan Quinn could fit right in. But offensively, he would need to get a quarterback. If he gets a quarterback, Dan Quinn would be good to go. But I know Matt Ryan going to have to be gone if Dan Quinn wants to come. Now, the Houston Texans, to me, I believe they should give Lovey Smith a chance. Sort of like the Panthers job. Steve Wilkes should get another shot if the players love him, if the players admire him, adore him. Give him another shot to right the ship. That's what I would do. But if you do, if Lovey decides they decide to get rid of Lovey, they're going to go get a coach who is a no-name. Because I don't see Harbaugh going there. Peyton's definitely not coming. They don't have no quarterback. Dan Quinn, could I see him go there? I don't know if Jerry will allow that. Jerry will block that. So, they would have to find the coach. But in my opinion, I just think they ought to stick with Lovey. Lovey did a good job this year for what he had. You came in the season with no quarterback, right? And, hey, he did pretty good. So, like I said, I would keep Lovey. But if they get rid of Lovey, they're going to go get a no-name coach. Now, Arizona, Arizona doesn't have, I think, the collateral to trade for Payton. I don't know if they do. They might. But I don't think they do. So, who could I see going there? Nobody. Cliff Kingsbury going to be there another season. Because they extended his contract. They paid him too much. So, he's going to be there. I don't see them getting rid of him. At all. So, Arizona going to be trash the next two, three years. Unless they make some changes. Unless they get a real running back. They get a better offensive line. They run better plays. Get a better quarterback coach. I would bring in a quarterback coach. I will bring in a real quarterback coach to teach Kyler how to stay in the pocket as well as roll out when it's time to roll out. And actually run a real system. Run some eye formation. Run two backs. Run them under center sometimes. Like, you're going to need somebody to teach Kyler, you know, how to be a quarterback. Because Cliff Kingsbury sucked his quarterback in college. He was terrible. Now, so, but for if they do get rid of him, then I would trade for Sean Payton. If they get rid of Cliff Kingsbury, trade for Sean Payton, this would be the perfect job for Sean Payton. Sean Payton to turn that Cardinals team around. But remember, Kyler got hurt, so he's not coming back no time soon. So Sean Payton might say hell no. The best job to me for Sean Payton 
would be the Denver Broncos because they got an established quarterback that he likes. He likes an established quarterback. Unless the Chargers get rid of their coach, even if they go to the playoffs and Sean Payton goes there, I can see that too. But Arizona, I don't see it. They pay in Cliff too much money. So I don't think that's going to happen. But that's my thoughts on the coachings, um, the positions that are open after the 2022-2023 season. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, share this. Hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. If you love what you hear, um, if you love what they what they hear, you can um, donate um, to the um, description box. Hit the cash app link. You can donate whatever your hearts desire. You guys can also super chat when we go live or premiere video, and you guys can also leave a super thanks. So thank you guys for listening. We out, Deezy.